Hello and welcome back. In this video I'm going to be restoring this wagon that's pretty beat up from about 30 years or so of being used, left out in the sun, in the rain. It's held up very well given the time period, but it, it needs to be restored and get a little bit more life in it. There was no major problems with it. The wood was still pretty solid. Just the paint was chipped. The polyurethane was pretty cracked from years of uh, sun abuse. Same with the metal, a little rusty on the bottom, but overall very good condition given its age and how long it's been beaten up for. I start by disassembly, taking the base off, and now I'm here, I'm unscrewing the sides that hold the these uprights together. Those threaded rods just come out and it allows the whole frame to come apart, which made it very nice to take apart. It wasn't glued previously and I won't re-glue it this time either. Everything just popped right out. And there's a dado cut around that edge that that piece of plywood sits in that's and the base connects to that. You can see how sun-worn and faded all the the wood here is. It's it's oak, very nice, very solid, just uh needs to be redone. I start the actual process by drilling out these rivets that are in there that are holding these connectors that the sides fit in. So I just drill and knock down those rivets to the point where I can pop it off here with a screwdriver. Just like so. And then I'm able to tap out those rivets through the other side. But I drill out both sides first and then I start tapping them all individually. They came out pretty easy. The rivets seemed to be steel, but they drilled away just enough where I could pop them out. And then just here using a punch, I can get rid of those remaining rivets that go through. Just so I have an easier time and I don't have to worry about finishing or sanding around all these pieces of metal. So once all those are removed, I just take a look here and see how, how really beat up that this oak is from this time. And now bringing it over to the joiner. I just wanted to, uh, I took off as small amount as I could. I probably set it to a 30 second or less just because I didn't want to sand off all this finish and I wanted to get a quick result. So I just used that just to tune up those sides and removed very little material, just enough where I can get down to mostly wood. Uh, there's a few sections that were low and I had to come back through and sand, but this, re this removed about 90% of the old finish that was on there. And I just run it through on both faces just to clean it up enough. It also flattened these pieces as well. You could tell that they were never properly squared. So this kind of helped that process a little bit. Now as the plywood base couldn't go through a joiner, couldn't go through a planer, I was stuck sanding that. So I show a little bit here, but there was a lot of, a lot of sanding to get that finish off. Now jumping ahead to the refinishing the base, I did some sanding and some buffing off camera to get some of that rust off. And now I'm coming through with this black paint, just cleaning up that surface. I wiped it down with acetone prior to application just because it was a little greasy. And I just put a few coats of black on just to freshen up that paint. There's no major damage and no major rust, so this was a pretty straightforward process. But I use this engine paint that I, I like. It seems to hold up better than regular spray paint and it's about the same price. A few days and a few coats later, I can come back through and take it off my little stands here. And the finish turned out pretty well. Not perfect, but then again, I did not strip all the old paint off. I just knocked anything loose off and recoated, which seemed to be fine as it held up for this long with minimal rust. Now, after a lot of sanding, I'm coming through and doing a few more coats of new polyurethane. I brush on a few light coats over a few days and it really brings that wood back. You can see that there, there isn't much damage on the side pieces and there's only minimal staining on the plywood base from the rusting over the years, which you'll see here in a minute as I apply it. Same thing with the base, I just do a very light coat so it dried quickly and I was able to apply a few coats a day. Ultimately I put five or six coats on and that'll build up a nice 
tight surface and keep it keep it for another 30 years or so now going to the hardware portion there was some rust and stuff on the metal pieces so i'm going through on the wire wheel here just to clean the rust off and just shine up that metal a little bit more Now back to reassembly. I'm putting these new rivets in, these pop rivets to reattach those side connector pieces. So I put the two rivets in through the connector and then clamp it down. And as you clamp, it tightens up the other side and expands it. So that's what holds those rivets in place. So I do one and two on one of these pieces and they turn out very good. It's a very solid connection and then followed up with the rest of them. There was quite a bit of them on this project, but it was worth taking them off. Now reassembling the sides here, I'm putting those threaded rods back through. I'm just starting on one side and I tighten it down enough, but I don't over tighten it because I still have to slide this plywood base in here, which you see now. And I slide that in from the other side and then I'm able to push it in all the way and then squaring it up, I put the other adjacent side on and tighten it down the same way with that threaded rod. Now reassembling the base here, the metal base that the wheels mount on with all the cleaned up hardware. And I added a few washers. There's missing washers all over this thing and I, I added new ones on just to keep a little bit more protection and a little bit uh, tighter tolerances. Especially here on this portion I'm working on now, there was there was no washers in here and it definitely scraped up the paint a lot more than it needed to. So by putting in washers, you're reducing that bearing size and it allows the piece to move better. But you can see how this goes together here. It's very easy, very simple, yet effective. And those washers there definitely were not there before and those were an ad by me to make it a little easier in operation. I tighten everything down just to the point where it's too tight to move and then I back off a little bit just so everything's uh, nice and loose but there's not any slop in there. Now putting these back tires on I was able to take off these block heads. They're just little caps that go on and there's little indentations on them that grab to the axle and that's how those are held in place. So I'm just able to tap those back on and that's what mounts those back tires on. Now the sides of the piece I wanted to recoat in red. I did some light sanding before painting just to knock off any loose paint. And I'm able to go through with some fresh red coat. Oh, I do about five or six over the course of a few days with some light sanding in between. I also was able to remake this stencil and I just matched as close as I could to the original. The font is a little different, but it's it's close enough. So I'm able to make this quick little template here. And then I tape it into position and I can spray some fresh white paint through it. And it transfers that stencil over and it worked very well. Then peeling off the tape very carefully so I don't remove the paint. It comes off very, very easily. And I'm left with a nice white transfer stencil. So I put that into place and I attached the last piece, which is the handle. And I held off on this until the end just because it got in the way. It just feeds through with one bolt and a washer on the other side that tightens everything down with a nut. And that's how the handle attaches. It was quite the transformation. It was a uh, it was pretty beat up. The biggest improvement was the oak, but overall it looks very good. Very simple restoration, and it'll hopefully get another 30 years or so out of this wagon. I thank you all for watching. Please comment below and let me know what you'd like to see next, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.